What's up, everyone? I'm back again with another Crow's Nest entry. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, you know, we, we out here. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing else to be talking about but this. So, man, crazy stuff in the world right now. As I said in the last video, the only thing that's giving me comfort and solace is knowing Louis Farrakhan got a lecture called a lex series of lectures called The Time and What Must Be Done. I swear to on everything, ever since I was a little boy, they've been saying the same thing over and over again. And the stuff he used to say used to scare me. Because you know, it was like very like just talking about the fall of America and the unraveling of things and shit, you know, the white man is the devil stuff. And I remember my mom used to say stuff like that, and I'd be like, why are you talking about white people like that? You know, and I just didn't understand. And you know, you have your you have your experiences. I remember, I remember when I was a little boy. I was in like what, like seventh grade. I went to McConnell High Middle School in uh, Gwinnett County in Georgia. I fucking hate that school. <laughs> uh, but uh, this white boy. At the school, I forgot I think his name was Kyle. I never forget his name was Kyle. He had me up. I was out. I was waiting for my mom because it was like a really, really bad storm happening at the time. And I was waiting for my mom. My mom to come get me. And then he asked me. I'm on, I'm on the side of the road. I mean, side. We're on the side of the parking lot, waiting for parents. And this motherfucker was like, "Hey, Jamal, um, are you? Um, does your dad live with you?" And I said, "No, because you know, I, I, I wasn't raised with my dad." He talking about. Uh, why is it? Yeah, why is it that every black black person I know acts that their parent, their dad doesn't live with them? You know what I'm saying? And you know, I don't even really recall how I responded to it. I think I might have ignored them or something like that, or I might have told them to shut up. I don't remember. I was tight though. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, that was like seventh grade. That was like a very light. I'm like, man, listen. When it turn, when I burn my hand, for the most part. It don't take me that many times for me to really be like, oh, word. I've had a, I've experienced a lot of racist shit at school. I remember this one white boy kept talking shit about my hair because I, I used to, you know, my hair used to be really, I used to do like a really low cut when I was little. And um, this little boy basically kept commenting on how low my hair was. And granted, he was notorious for being a little, 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 little fucker. I don't even remember his name, um, but. You know what I mean? I was just kind of trying to ignore him. He kept going in and going in. You know what I mean? And he wasn't aware of that, you know. Jamal has been cussing since he was like nine because he grew up in South Carolina where <laughs> either you know how to roast or you can scrap. And even then, I wasn't the best roaster, but I'll cuss you out real quick. So, none of this to say, I just basically, I just told dude to shut the fuck up, right? And um, he's like, oh, well, you can't say that to me. You know, what, what's your name? You know, and I'm like, bro, I'm not, tell I'm not telling you my name. What the fuck do I look like? And then, you know, I'm like, he's trying to look on my paper, on the side of on my paper. You know what I'm saying? Right? And he says, well, well, I guess I can't make you. I guess you people do have your rights. Oh, you, do, you people do have your rights now. I punched him. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, man. Still makes me mad to this day. And I didn't hit him as hard as I did because my teacher, the teacher I had, did not like me. He was not fond of me. And I didn't want to get suspended. But I didn't, I didn't swell, I didn't swing on him like I wanted to. But I, I, but I did punch him, though. He was, he was going to report me and blah, blah, blah. I didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm talking about? And every time I saw him after that, he was ready. He was trying to pop. He was trying to pop shit. Talking about you know, because you're saying I didn't hit him as hard. But I would. But when I approached him, all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, you, yeah, you pussy. You know what I'm saying? So, pardon me. But anyway, <laughs> oh man, it's stuff like this that's going on that makes you think about stuff like that, bro. So, but yeah, man, I grew up. I don't know, man. I, I grew up in an environment where it was like. I know white folk, and I know black folk too. And I know as black people, we can be a trip too. And a lot of that is learned behavior. Uh, 
I used to have some pretty janky friends back in the days. Honestly, if I can, if in retrospect, I had some pretty fucked up friends that I accepted in my life. And they were very, um, uh, they were cool when it wasn't cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were dope and then they weren't dope. I oftentimes found myself being the butt of their expense. There's some, uh, really dramatic stuff that I don't even really want to, I, I don't want, I'm trying to be more transparent, but I don't even want to go into that yet because it, it actually still fucks with me quite a bit, but let's just say it was some very embarrassing things that were had that were said and done, and, and I, I, I got to be careful. You know how, you know when, you know when things happen to you and traumatic shit and you blame yourself for it? like that kind of shit, you know what I mean, so like, but no matter what happened with me, whether it be with, with, with white folks, or whether it, where it was with, with black folks, black folks, it was very like, I mean, you know, what kind of kept me grounded was just the fact, I mean, you know, hearing Louis Farrakhan since I was a little boy, man, like, bro, that really kind of gave me perspective on everything, I, I was talking, I was saying America ain't shit since like, <laughs> since six, since, 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 since sixth grade and I remember I'd say that and then my homeboys were like yo bro shut up with that because they don't want to hear that you know what I mean I recall I was always as I said in my last video I've always been angry always but like I said seeing Farrakhan conduct himself and seeing my mother conduct herself my mother deals with like you know she's a black woman right she's in the educational system she's in a system where she can't even speak fully on the on on the on certain certain things that go down with us because if it, it, it's not a part of the curriculum and parents might get upset and she could lose her job that type of shit and she knows a great deal you know what I'm saying I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for her right it is a trip how um, but I learned how to <laughs> it's a trip because I, I learned from her 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 coolness about how to be able to weave through things, you know what I'm saying? Which I know wasn't easy for her to learn, but seeing her move the way she moved, she would come home and talk all that shit all day long about how fucked up the world is and how messed up America is. Then go to work the next day and be able to conduct yourself. That's how I knew you had, you gotta, you know, you gotta know how to manage your anger and um, know when the time is to pop off on the motherfucker. You know what I'm talking about? Yo, check this out. I remember recently, I went to this exhibit, this art exhibit up in um, in Manhattan, and like they had it where it was two. Um, Q-Tip had his um his art on display, like and pieces that he's been collecting from all over the world and whatnot. It's really, really beautiful, dope stuff. There was a point where I'm in there. There's this Indian dude, this little short little Indian dude, or whatever the fuck. I'm, I'm actually I don't, I don't know what he was. I apologize for saying that. I don't know what he was, but you know. this guy basically was. Uh, I thought he knew what the pieces were. You know what I'm saying? And he was asking me questions on what do I think certain pieces meant. And I remember thinking to myself. Cause I'm thinking like he probably knows. Cause I'm thinking the people who usually are watching, I would, at least in my perspective, I thought anyway, people who are like watching those uh, those pieces and you know they act as security or whatever. I thought that they were the ones who knew. They usually know about it. So he's asking me these questions. Most of what he he's asking me these questions on what I think. And he tells me what he thinks. And mind now, I'm thinking that what he's telling me, I'm thinking he he knows for a fact, but. He's giving me these crazy interpretations that I remember thinking to myself, is that really what that means? And I remember at one point it got to a place where like, man, there's, a, there's this one particular piece where you see a brother's hands, right? And he's holding a little piece of paper that has a number on it. And it's basically like a like a, your jail cell number kind of thing. And he's like shrouded in almost like twigs and vines essentially right and you just see his eyes and it gives you the statistic of um how many people are incarcerated 
right? It's a powerful piece. This dude said that the hands were monkeys' hands. He thought these, you know, the way my hands look were monkey hands. And he thought it was something along the lines of like King Kong base base or some crazy shit. And I remember he was trying to convince me that that's what that meant. And I remember at one point I was like, bro, no, what are you talking about? That's me. What are you talking about? He, this piece is about me. What the fuck are you talking about? You think incarceration <laughs> is about ant beasts? It was crazy to me. And like, I wasn't sure if man's was like, I, it could have just dawned on me. I'm like, bro, you're giving me crazy interpretations. And granted, it was beyond racist. You dig what I'm saying? And the part of me was like, I don't know if you're like, yo, you but are you for real right now? But I remember I just got, it was so. Not nah, school bands, you know what I'm saying? And he just kind of, he asked about another piece that was the same reflection. And I was like, I told him the same thing. And he kind of backed up off of me. He basically was like, yo, I thank you for putting me on game. He, he said he's from overseas, right? But man's been in America for fucking 20 years, though. You trying to tell me that you don't recognize what these hands look like and you want to talk incarceration numbers? It was Bananas. <laughs> so, moral of the story is, man, um, interesting times. I think I got more stories like the like the ones I told you, but I think I wanted to just talk about that because <laughs> ah, people are on a trip, bro. But I was I never popped off on them per se. I sp- I know when I spoke with passion on my. You know, on, on schooling him. But I never popped off. But I've always been angry. I don't think that's going to subside. And I think that's why I'm kind of calm and a little bit collected despite what's everything is going on right now. But there's some other things that um, I do fear happening that don't make me as calm. We'll talk about that later though. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think. Comment, all that good stuff. Hope you're um, hope you're staying safe. Hope you're keeping your mind right. Hope you're lining up with God, bro. That's, that's the most important thing you can do. And again, listen to Lewis Farrakhan. I can't stress that enough. You'll feel better about yourself. And you have clear skin afterwards, too. If you want clear skin, listen to Farrakhan. Peace.